So this is for people who have never heard about the Fire Emblem games before. I'm going to tell you a little bit about them. People who don't know what Fire Emblem is might be a bit surprised to hear that the franchise is 33 years old now. So yeah, it's an old game by Nintendo. It's a tactical role-playing game. The games are known for a challenging battles on grid-based maps, where players control a diverse roster of characters. So yeah, something I really like about the Fire Emblem games is that most Fire Emblem games are set in a new time and age, with completely different characters, so everything feels new and fresh for every single game you play. But the newest game did bring back old and dear characters into a new storyline, which was really nice to see. One character that often pops up in Fire Emblem games are Marth, as he is the poster boy for the franchise, so yeah, no wonder why he pops up all the time. The characters got their own classes, abilities, personalities. The series also incorporated permanent character death, which adds a layer of consequence to strategy decisions made during gameplay. So yeah, that's also a very fun and nice mechanic they added into the game. It's easier to tell that the game has become very popular since its release in 1990, as it's still thriving today. Initially, the game was exclusively released in Japan, Boohoo said said. It was known to release of Fire Emblem The Blessing Blade for the Game Boy Advance in 2003 that the series gained significant attention outside of Japan. And the character I am going to cosplay is from this exact game, but I will be doing one of his Fire Emblem Hero skins, which is a Fire Emblem game made for mobile. I have personally done a few Fire Emblem cosplay, as it's one of my favorite game franchises. I really, really like Fire Emblem, and I will probably do a lot of Fire Emblem cosplays in the future, as I have done in the past. Oh my, the price though. And shipping, oh no. The ship, oh, but the, but the, uh, but. No, it's a bit meh, uh, since we only have one store to get foam. Or I think we got another one, actually. Uh, never bought foam from them before, uh, but I don't think I got a lot of options. I, I think they only got a thin one. I'm not sure. Uh, and the shipping is so expensive, uh, but uh, actually the shipping is cheaper now, since uh, or after I moved it was more expensive before. Because uh, if you the further away from, I don't know, Moss you live, I think, or something like that, the more expensive it gets. Um, uh, it's kind of weird because usually a store has like one shipping price no matter where in the country you live, so it's a bit weird. Uh, but that's how it is. So, I have placed my order and it's so expensive. Ah. Uh, so, I'm gonna wait for it and go and pick it up when it arrives. Good news, uh, my package has arrived. Uh, I'm just holding my thumb over the picker point so you can see where it is. And if you <laughs> try to use the code, uh, sorry, but the package is already in my hands by the time you watch this video. I'm sorry, but not really. <laughs> so yeah, I'm gonna go to the post office right now and pick it up. Whoop. On my way to the store to pick up my package with phone. Don't be suspicious. You have now seen me uh, carry this uh, bad boy uh, with me home. So I'm gonna unbox it for you guys. It's super exciting. It cost me 1k. Uh, around 100 USD so it's gonna be something really cool right yeah I'm gonna just get this bad boy open I should get, actually get a knife um, and not my <laughs> fabric scissors and foam a lot of foam actually oh that's how the um, uh, What's they call the foam devils? The small one might be the right uh, size for what I'm gonna use them for, but I might have not enough, and that's an issue because I'm gonna use a lot. Uh, or maybe, well, since I need to cut them in half, maybe I do have enough. 
so and then I also got some bigger ones but I don't really know what to, uh, to use them for but I'm happy that I took these small ones as well because I was thinking about just getting those but they are actually pretty big there is a really a big difference uh, so yeah I have to take a look at that and yeah the foam I don't think I need to actually take it out and show you guys because you know how foam looks like but yeah that's the foam hole so before I start on the pattern making, I actually need to get some masking tape because uh, I don't have that. Uh, so I need to go to the store, uh, but I don't know, should I bike or should I take the bus? Bus is quicker, uh, but I need exercise and <laughs> bike is exercise. Do I wanna? Do I wanna? Hmm. I'm doing the famous wrap your body pattern technique. Which means that you wrap your whole body in plastic wrap and then you add tape on top of that. And when you have wrapped your whole body in tape, you draw on it. And then you get a pattern that fits your body. Easy peasy. After my pattern was done, I transferred it over to paper so I could fix it and make it look more clean. And these are the pieces that I use as stencil when I'm gonna transfer them over to foam. This is going to be the main body and I use 5mm foam for the main body. Also when you are working with foam you always want a sharp knife, so remember to sharpen your knife. And you usually have to do it multiple times when you are cutting, if you are cutting a lot of foam. Because it gets dull real quick. I also trembled some of the edges so it looked better, which you will see in a bit. I cut the back piece into two pieces. I also glued some pieces together that I am ripping off later, so yeah. And here you can see how it looks when I have used my Dremel on edges, uh, compared to not using Dremel on edges. Uh, but I'll have some detail on top of uh, this part, so you won't even see it. Uh, this part you will see, uh, so I'm gonna do a paint job and all of that. And it just looks a little, a little bit better uh, than just keeping it like that. Did the same here, because you will be seeing this uh, part of the costume. So I need to change it a little bit, because this go goes very far far down so I get like this, I don't know what to call it, thing sticking down, I don't want that. Uh, so I just took my pen and tried to draw, drew, uh, draw a line where I, I'm gonna cut it and hopefully it looks good. I think it's gonna look good and I have to do the same on, well not that part but this part as well so yeah it's gonna look a bit, tiny bit better. So there was just a lot of trial and error and things that needed to be fixed. Which happens when you are making new things and doing things from the start. So what you are seeing me do now is that I took my main body and I taped on top of it with masking tape because it's easy to draw on. And I drew out the uh, top design thing, the pieces that are going on top of the main body. This piece got was a little bit too small so I had to redraw it and make it a little bit bigger. So this is the wrong piece. I have this piece which is a little bit bigger. And then I cut off these pieces and added a little bit more to it because uh, you need something when you are gonna connect them later. So I added some connecting pieces, pieces or what you wanna call them. So I'm now gonna cut out um, this in 10 millimeter foam and I think I'm gonna cut these out in 5 millimeter because I think the 2 millimeter might be a bit too small. So the top pieces are made out of I think the biggest one is made out of 10mm foam actually and the other pieces are made out of 5mm foam and the detail on top of that is made out of 2mm foam because you don't want a thick foam for that. But I did the same technique where I tape and draw. Two pieces cut out. I'm using my knee to heat form so they don't look as flat because yeah, I don't want them to be flat. Which works perfectly, so you can see it got a bit of a curve now, instead of being completely flat. And we don't want flat. I'm just gluing all of the pieces together with contact cement, and we know the drill, so you know how to do this. So for sealing cracks and stuff like that, I'm using the Padex 
acrylic sealant, I think that is what it is. It's by the brand Padex, and I know that Quick Seal is a very popular brand among cosplayers, but that is a product that is really hard for me to get my hands on. So I think this is like the best thing I can easily get. But I do want to try the Quick Seal. I also want to have it so I could compare which one is better. I'm doing the same tape technique as earlier where I tape on top of my pieces in order to make a pattern. And here you can see that I'm doing more design stuff. So this is the fun part. Then I have to cu cut all of those pieces in 2mm foam and it can get really hard when you have a lot of design going on. This is the part where I wish I had a laser cutter because that would do the job for me. Make it look so smooth and so nice and it can do a lot of tiny details that is impossible by hand. But yeah, I don't have a lot of those tiny details, so I did manage. I also just drew the design on one side, because uh, when I'm gonna line it up, I just flip it and draw the other side. The reason why I add red marker to my piece is so I can easily see where I need to cut, because I do a lot of mistakes when I'm cutting. So this just makes it a little bit easier for me. I cut out my piece and then I add it to the foam I'm gonna use, align it, and the lines can get a little bit uneven so I try to clean it up before I start cutting and when I'm happy I cut out my piece. This part I really enjoy because this is where I feel like my piece is coming together and you can see all of your hard work and it's starting to look like something. I'm gluing all of my creative pieces together so I have one unit and then it's over to painting. I mention this all the time, but it's very important to use the right primer when you're working with foam. You want something that is flexible, and I'm using the Hexflex primer because that is the primer that is most accessible for me. And I'm mostly using the Amsterdam branded acrylic paint as well for my piece. I find the Amsterdam acrylics to be a bit thin, so it takes a few layers before it looks covered and good. But at the same time, I find it to be very smooth looking compared to other paints that might be a bit thick. So you might need fewer layers, but they add a lot of textures because they are thicker. So this is how it looks like right now. I uh, I think I'm gonna say that I'm finished with the blue paint. Uh, you can kind of see the brush uh, stroke. I think this side is the worst. Uh, so I feel like I should do another layer on that side. Uh, while the other sides or other parts looks pretty good I would say. Um, it does add a little bit of I don't know, personality when you can see the strokes and it still looks good I would say. Uh, so I don't really need to do another layer uh, if I'm completely honest. I'm using the metallic gold from Amsterdam. It's a light gold. It's a very warm gold. I suppose Alouette has a colder gold color but when am I ever accurate with the coloring? But how I try to work is that there's gold, I'm using gold, there's blue, I'm using blue. And the cape is supposed to be lighter than the shirt itself, and I try to work from there. So the colors might not match 100%, and it's also really hard to get the correct color. But that doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I'm using a lot of masking tape when I paint, just to protect what I have already painted from the new paint. Doing the draw on design was the hardest part of this costume, so hard. Me talking like I'm done, I'm not done. But yeah, this was really hard. I used a chalk, because you can easily just wash it off when we were done, uh, to draw the design, and then I went in with the Posca mar marker, because I thought that would be a bit easier to do. Uh, but for the lines, I masked it out and then painted, because I found that to look better. Uh, but yeah, this was really hard to do. I finished it by adding some black liner. So I'm kind of done with my armor piece. Uh, I think it looks kind of good. Uh, something I don't like uh, that I did 
is the black outline on the detail. I don't really like that, uh, but yeah, it's done, so I have to keep it like that. Uh, so it's almost done, but I'm gonna use some oil wash on top of it, uh, but I don't have the thinner or the thinner thing to make it more liquidy, uh, so I need to buy that before I can finish this piece. Uh, but I'm working on uh, this armor piece right now. We are moving away from the top piece and continuing on the main body for the whole armor. I added the sausages where they needed to go. I had to clean off some of the glue residue so I used my airbrush cleaner and it worked perfectly fine. I had to get some more paint in the middle of painting because that small tube I had didn't last long so I bought a bigger one and I also bought the oil I need for the wash. So I'm back and I got everything uh, I need. I just want to do this and show you guys what I uh, bought, but I can't do that. Uh, used a lot of money on not very much. Small cosplay haul and uh, it was really expensive as well. Around 5 USD for all of this and it's not really that much either. So, But yeah, here is the paint I got. It's the same one as the one I had of course, just a bigger tube. You can see the difference pretty easily. The small one is really small. Uh, so yeah, it didn't last for long. Uh, I now got a big one and I also bought this oil thing that you can thin out your oil paints with because I want to do a wash. Uh, so I'm going to try this thing. It's from Sweden and everything is in Swedish as well. But yeah, and just new needles because I needed those and I just passed by them and I was like, oh yeah, I need needles. So I just pick them with me and this is for the armor to attach it so I'm gonna use uh, I don't know what this called uh, woven something and I also have uh, the regulator and these things I painted all of the sausage with gold but when I had to take the masking tape off I also pulled off some of the paint so I just went over with new paint to fix it Oil wash is something I never done before, so I might have done it the wrong way, I don't know. Uh, but I noticed that when I mixed or made my mixture, it was very lumpy. And I didn't really like the end result, because I've seen people do wash and it looks really nice, but mine looks dirty. And I didn't really want it to look dirty, but yeah, it looks dirty, but it also but also because of those lumps I had. it just added to the dirty effect. So yeah, I don't know. I'll try and figure out what I did wrong and fix it and try to do better in the future because oil wash should look really nice. I just don't think what I did looked really nice. Uh, I didn't get I didn't get the results I wanted and that's the issue. That is what is bugging me. Uh, it it looks decent, it looks okay, it looks dirty, and it's an armor, so it doesn't really matter that it looks dirty, because I'm out fighting, of course I'm gonna end up dirty. The chest armor is on the floor, it's still drying, it takes forever to dry, but it's oil paint, so it's not that strange. Uh, I think I used too much of the, uh, uh, what is called, um, thinner thing, the oil thinner, because... Uh, the oil paint itself was a bit weird and, I don't know, clumpy or how I should say it. Uh, so I did go over just normal uh, oil paint uh, just to try and fix it. Uh, I think it looks good right now though. I might have to add some more of it or black acrylic since it takes forever to uh, dry. It's been how long? Like a week or something. And we can take a look on the other other <laughs> or the detail thing. Uh, I think it looks good. I just thought uh, the um, it looks a bit um, messy or like dirty in a way and I don't know if I like the dirty look because um, uh, I think I would like it to look more like shadowy uh, than dirty um, but it's an armor so it, it does work Anywho, when all of my pieces was done painting, I glued the top piece to the main body piece. I ended up buying eyelets for it, but I should have gotten grommets, I think. So, I might have to buy that later, 
as well as I am gonna add some of those at the bottom of the armor because I used another another what is it called? I don't know what it's called. I used something else for the bottom part. I should have just stuck with the eyelets for the whole back. But yeah, I decided to do something fancy and do something else at the bottom. But I shouldn't have done it, so I'm gonna fix that later. I'm using curtain rings for the harness in order to attach my shoulder armor easier. And I'm also using those curtain rings because they are cheap. And that's the reason. And you get a pack package of a lot of them, and they're cheaper than buying oil rings, but they're a bit thick though. Just a tiny bit thick. I'm making my harness out of woven ribbon, and I did buy it in blue first, but then I ended up buying it in brown instead, because I thought brown would look way better. And I also found closures in the matching color, which is really nice, because I was thinking about doing them in gold. Uh, but yeah, I found much matching one, which is really rare, so I just had to buy them. I had to buy the brown one. Looks really nice. So here is a little tip for you. If you struggle with your attachment, that they get loose all the time and you have to fix it all the time, you can try and attach them to a piece of foam, and then you glue that piece of foam to your foam, and it will stick so much better. I also had to reinforce my armor piece, because where my seams are, it's, the attachment is very weak, so I had to reinforce with a piece of foam. And it's much stronger now. I also fixed up the paint job a bit, and then I went over with varnish to protect my paint job. I guess I need to show you guys how I made the shoulder armor as well, but I did the same technique as I did with the chest armor. I wrapped my shoulder in tape, I drew on it, and made a pattern. But I found the shoulder armor to be a bit harder to get the right form, shape, get the right shape of it. I think my shoulder armor is a tiny bit too small. They should have been a bit bigger, I think. But I think the overall shape of them are good. They're just a t tiny tad small, that's all. It can be very hard to get the foam to hold its shape. Uh, so I decided to just add some metal of strings inside of my foam. So I used my wood burning tool to burn the foam so I could fit my metal string inside of it. It works and I also can shape shift it. Not that I need to do it, but I can if I want to. Uh, but yeah, it's always hard to get it to hold the shape. But I, I've seen people just use more foam and that makes the uh, overall piece hold its shape. Uh, I think, but yeah, that's how I made the shoulder armor, and I'll show you guys the armor piece on my body. So this is how my armor looks like when I have it on. I still have to do some minor fixing on it, like making better attachments for the shoulder, because they are loose, and I don't really want them to be that loose. Uh, what I did with uh, my Marth armor is that I added rubber bands around, so that would uh, stay better, so I might do that, or maybe magnets, perhaps? Because then they won't really move, and it also won't uh, destroy my jacket, but rubber bands won't do that either. So I'll have to figure out what I want to do, but yeah, I'm gonna add something. And how I attach them on top of the uh, harness is just like this, very easy. And then I have my rings located on my shoulder, and I just put it inside the ring and it's very easy to do it yourself as well my back doesn't really look nice right now it just it real quick but I think I'm gonna add uh, those circles down here as well I use eyelets but I need to change the grommets I think so I'm gonna do that and also add it to the bottom because I don't know what it is I don't know if you can see it because it's so far down and I just use this iron ribbon thing I had lying around so I have to find something that looks a little bit better than what I have but I think the armor looks really nice so far you can't really see it down here <laughs> but yeah another thing that is really tiny bit annoying is that you can kind of see my cli clippies and stuff so I, I think I should have had them a bit further down so it would be hidden behind my armor but I know it's not really that big of a deal, I suppose. Also, I'm also missing uh, those circular detail things that's gonna go around here. 
So yeah, I'm gonna do that later. <laughs> I don't know how to make them, but I've been thinking about making maybe do it in 3D, like Blender and printing, but my 3D printer isn't working right now. Uh, so I might do that later. It's just a tiny detail. It's not really that important, so I don't really care, but yeah, I'm missing some detail on it. Uh, so yeah, really happy with it. So gonna be really interesting to see all of the pieces together And I'm going to a con in August, but I don't think I'll be done with this costume until then But it would be really nice if I was done and could Bring something new because it's been a really long time since I bro brought something new and big to a con uh, But Elwood also got a really big sword and I don't really know how to make it because I also want to 3d print it But my 3d print isn't working and I'm not gonna make it work until the con which is really sad But yeah, we'll figure something out so so anyway, I hope you guys like this video and uh, Hopefully you guys want to see more crafting in the future the next thing I'm gonna post is the Hollywood short which I've been working on for so long uh, but I might do some makeup fillers in between my Hollywood work because there's a lot. My plan was to do the whole Hollywood costume in one video but I think the video would be really really long so I'm cutting it into pieces so this is the armor so yeah I hope you guys like this video I'm gonna see more in the future uh, crafting videos <laughs> but anyway take care guys and I'll see you guys in my next video goodbye Michiko out <laughs>